In order to get started with the notifications package, we'll need to go through a few steps to make sure things are ready and set. Uh, we'll start off by taking a look at our VCO plugins inventory here. We'll want to take a look at our AMQP plugin here to see whether or not there's any brokers already set up. If there are, you may have issues with conflicts, so ideally this package should be used on a clean system and it should be a starting point for generating your AMQP blocking task workflow handlers. Alright, so we see here that our AMQP um, is clean. There aren't any brokers pre-configured here, no listeners going on, nothing of that sort. And we can also see here that the vCloud Director plugin has been installed and it's configured. We can see that it's set up to talk to our private cloud here as well as our public cloud. For today's exercise and the notification packages, we will be using the private cloud. All right, next up, we need to log into our vCloud Director server, and we need to make sure that the AMQP configuration is set. So we'll go in as our administrative account on the system, click on Administration, and we'll go to Blocking Tasks, and then check Settings here. We want to make sure that we've got our um, test AMQP connection is successful with uh, the appropriate credentials and server information. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we see that the connection has succeeded. So that's good. And uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you make note of your um, password here for the AMQP server because that will be needed during our setup of the VCO workflows. Now for blocking tasks, we do need to go ahead and turn one on. Um, for this use case, we are doing an approval for the VApp provisioning. So for that case, we want to look at our vApp lifecycle group here. So expand that out. And we want to place a check on the instantiate vApp from template. Once that is checked, click on apply. We're all set there. Now let's take a quick look at um, our organizations. Um, the CN dev org is the one that we'll be working with for the exercise. And what we want to do is uh, go into our catalog and check our vApp templates to make sure that we have one with a, a Windows VM and I'll explain that a little bit later. But the important aspect here is that um, the, the Windows VM is configured to join a domain. Now the reason that we want it configured to join a domain is because part of our blocking task and approval is a step that will create an organizational unit in Active Directory that matches the org name that the vApp is being deployed to. And once that org is created, then we also create a computer account in Active Directory for the computer that's being deployed. So if we take a look at our guest OS customization here, we can see that we are enabled for uh, joining the VM to a domain. So that's good. This is the template that we'll be using later in the demo. All right, so since those things are set, we can go ahead and go over to our orchestrator client now and we go into our packages. If you haven't already done so, this is the point where you would go ahead and click on the import package icon here at the top, import the notifications package, and accept the certificate and trust and all that wonderful stuff. Once the package is imported, you should see a, a listing of workflows here. So we wanna get started with the uh, initialized VCD notifications perspective workflow here, so we'll double click on that. By double clicking on the element, it'll take us to the workflow in the uh, left hand pane here. Now once we have the workflow loaded up we're going to either click on the green play button here at the top to start the workflow or we can right click on the workflow and select start workflow from there. For the admin group this is the group that will be logging into a perspectives web view to get all the configuration done. So for our case we're going to use the VCO admins group that's been populated here and we'll go ahead and submit. And the group does come from the LDAP that you have VCO configured to do its authentication against. Once that's been completed, we can open up our web browser. We do need to use Firefox to do the configuration here, since the newer versions of Internet Explorer don't get along with the VCO web views. So I'll go ahead and pull up perspectives here. And it is port 8280 of your VCO server, slash VMO, slash perspectives. If you just put port 8280 and you hit enter, then you'll get a list of web views. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and do that just so you can see um, what the address comes up as 
when you don't have it bookmarked already. So port 8280 will come up. It'll show you a web view list. So we can click on there. And then we see that we have perspectives available here. Now we'll need to log in as the BCO administrator account. Once we've logged in, we can see here that we have a VCD notification admin perspective available to us. So we'll go ahead and load that particular one. And we see we have a number of tasks here that are available in our dashboard. Each one of these tasks maps directly to a workflow that is um, associated with this notification package. So the first one that we want to run is our customization config. This gives us an opportunity to set some defaults such as the approver email address that we want to send our notifications to, the group that our admin should be a member of in order to access the BCO workflow to do the approval. Now earlier I mentioned that we'll be creating an organizational unit for new Active Directory computer accounts to be created in. So here we want to click our Browse button and we see here that the Active Directory plugin is there. So we can expand that out and we can take a look at our domain. And I have an OU here for org OUs. So we'll go ahead and use this as our parent OU. This will be the root of any new organizational units that get created as a part of this workflow. All right, so the number of hours before sending last notice, we've got that set as 24 and the timeout in days is set for 10. So we'll just go ahead and accept those defaults and submit. All right, the task is completed successfully. We just stored those configuration values in the configuration of our BCO server so that our workflows will be able to read from those and use those as default values. So the next step that we want to do is create a vCloud Director notification subscription. This takes all the, uh, the, the dirty work out of um, manually creating all these separate things within VCO and trying to find the correct workflows to do all that. So we have a nice little wizard type interface here. So our queue and subscription name, but well, we're going to call this vApp template instantiation. And we need to specify our v, vCloud director host. So we'll click on the browse icon there. And again, we do want to do this in our private cloud. So we'll select the private cloud there. Click Select. And our AMQP password, we need to go ahead and get that entered here. The AMQP server name and username have automatically been extracted by the VCO workflow. So the uh, password does need to be supplied since we're not able to pull passwords using workflows. All right. Now create a broker. If no, choose existing or auto select. So if you already had a broker created, we could go ahead and select it here or if there were numerous brokers created, then it would attempt to auto choose one for you. Now again, I do recommend having a clean AMQP plugin, meaning no brokers pre-configured. So in that case, we do want it, the workflow to create a broker for us. So click Next. Now we need to adjust our filter policy. Now the AMQP bus does get a lot of traffic on there with the non-blocking and blocking tasks. And we want to make sure that this particular subscription is only getting triggered for um, the particular item that we're looking for. And that's our VApp template instantiation. So we need to scroll down and find the operation type here, blocking task operation type. So we want to say yes for filter on that. And when we clicked on yes, the screen reloaded a bit because this um, blocking task operation type box came up. So if we click on our little browse icon there, we'll see that we have the VCD instantiate vapp as a blocking task operation type. Now only one blocking task showed up here because we only have one enabled in vCloud Director. If we had five or six listed as uh, being enabled blocking tasks, those would show up here as well. So we'll go ahead and select our, VC, our VDC instantiate vapp. And we also want to filter on the notification type because there's several different notifications that are associated with the VDC Instantiate V app. So the particular one that we want is event type is for the create. So we see here we've got our com VMware vCloud event blocking task create. So that's what we want to really tell VCO, okay, 
I have a VCD uh, V app template that is being requested to be deployed or instantiated, but I've been told to block it. So here's here's the task information, and it's going to pass that over here to Orchestrator. So now we've got our, our root information that we really need, and we can click Next. Now we need to tell VCO which workflow to run when it receives one of those AMQP messages that matches those filters. Now we do have a pair of workflows here. One is Approve VApp Simple, and the other is Approve VApp AD Computer. Now the first one will send an email notification to the address that we specified as the approver. Um, that email notification will provide summary information about the request that's being processed and it'll give the approver an opportunity to either approve or reject that request. Once the approval has been granted then the workflow will resume and the uh, VCD will be told to go ahead and allow the provisioning to take place or tell it to uh, abort the, the provisioning request. Now the only difference with this one here is that we um, add our AD computer account into Active Directory. So we'll go ahead and show that one here. So we're going to select that and click on Next. Now the routing key has automatically been generated based on the, the settings that we specified earlier. So we don't want to change anything here. Just hit on Submit. All right, after a moment, we see that our task is completed successfully there. So now we have our subscription set and ready. Now we need a way for VCO to um, recognize that something has come in on that subscription. And that's where we have our listener workflow come into play. So we need to start our subscription listener workflow here. Click on Start Task. And the subscription, we need to specify which subscription we we're going to listen to. And we see here that our VApp template instantiation subscription that we created earlier is the only one listed. So that's good. We'll go ahead and select that and click on Submit. All right, we see that the workflow is now waiting for a signal. Let's take a look back over here in VCL real quick. And we will scroll down a bit. Start a subscription listener workflow and here is our listener. So we see that there's a, a message trigger that was created and it's waiting to see a message come across there. Now I did mention earlier that an email notification would be sent to the approver. Within that email notification are some hyperlinks that load the VCO web operator web view. So we need to make sure that that web view is enabled before we go forward. And we can see here that the web operator was not enabled so let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, our web operator is ready. Now let's click back over to workflow so that we have this ready. I'm going to expand the workflow samples to be triggered by policies and I'm going to expand policy because when, when we do have um, something get triggered here, this run workflow is going to do, pull up the workflow runner workflow and that will evaluate the criteria and pass the appropriate parameters over to the workflow that we specified, the Approve VApp AD Computer. So let's go back over to our browser and we'll click into vCloud Director. Now here we're logged into the Rainpool Private Cloud and we're going to request a uh, VApp template to be provisioned to us. And here we have our Windows 2008 R2 template that we saw earlier. So we'll click on Next and let's give it a sample name. Windows 2008 demo server. All right, so that's the name of our V app. Test deployment. We'll set our runtime lease to one day since this is just a, a quick test here and we'll set the storage lease to seven days. On next, all right, we'll update our full name and computer name for the, the Windows computer there. Just change the dash TPL to test. And for network, we'll go ahead and select the Rainpool corporate network. Static IP pool, that's good. And we click next, next, and finish. Okay, that's good. Now we see here that the uh, vCloud director says pending processing. So what's just happened is we started that vApp template instantiation but vCloud Director recognized, hey, wait a minute, there's a blocking task for that. So I'm going to send over 
that task information to the AMQP bus. The AMQP bus received that information and orchestrator should uh, notice that there's a, a new task there. We see now that our workflow runner has a little plus sign next to it. So we can see that a workflow was executed here. And as I said earlier, workflow runner calls the workflow that we've specified, and that's in our approve AD computer. And if we click the plus next to that, we can see that we have a, a little yellow icon, which means that we're waiting for user interaction. Now, I did mention that an email was generated, so let's go ahead and go over to our email client and check our mail. We'll hit send and receive to make sure we've got the most recent uh, message queued up here. Okay, so we see that the AMQP task has a lot of information in there. Um, we've got the name of uh, the user that placed the request, administrator, it's the Rainpole admin. Got a bit of information about their quota, the template information, disk size, the V app, and the number of VMs and the disk size of those VMs. And what else? We've got our individual VMs as well, and we see that um, the requested name is win2k8r2test, that's what we specified earlier. And we have a link down here to answer the workflow. So we'll go ahead and click on that link. It launches our browser, and we do need to log in as a, a member of the administrative group there. And we'll log in as our IT manager account. We see here that the uh, web operator page has loaded up and we have our vApp approval. We've got our details here showing us all the uh, specifications that we saw in our email. So we have an opportunity to review. And now we have uh, approved the vApp, yes or no. We do default to no. So let's go ahead and say yes and we'll submit. Now if I click back over to our orchestrator client, and we'll scroll down a little bit here. We see our workflow runner has executed and we've got our green check mark. And we see that the approved VAP AD computer workflow has been executed as well with a green check mark. So if all is right, we should be able to go into our Active Directory users and computers. We've got our org OU's parent here, so let's hit refresh. And it does look like we have a plus sign there. So our CN dev, that's the org that we are logged into when we submitted that request to instantiate a vapp. We, we have that uh, new OU created here and if we click into that OU we do have our Win2K8 R2 test computer account has been created. Okay great now let's go back over to our vCloud director and make sure that our vapp has actually been deployed. And here it is our Windows 2008 demo server. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at our virtual machines, make sure our naming is good. So there we have it, Windows 2008 R2 test. And we've just witnessed the blocking tasks being captured by VCO. Um, VCO is sending off notification emails to an approver, providing a method of the approver um, making a decision using a web interface, and notifying vCloud Director of that approver's decision. That concludes today's demo.